What is up everybody? This is... and of course, guys, of course I forgot to volume check myself. Nearly blew up my eardrums. This is Ruminati. Oh, what? And we're starting out our series of the USA 1960. And to be honest, I just don't like playing with the US because of the placement. Everything's so far away. It takes 20 rounds just to even really get in the fight very well. Except here in Africa. But that's only in 1960. I think by plan, I'm going to take what they've given me here, maybe throw down a couple more artillery pieces and head to Cuba. I'm going to hold off on throwing down super heavies and going to Europe. Because I'm more convinced... And I have more faith in my European allies to hold the Russians off than I do my Japanese allies and my Australian allies being able to hold off the Chinese. So I'm going to focus on China first. And I think from everything I'm given here in the south on the islands and stuff, I'll head towards Hong Kong. And with everything like from mainland US and up in Alaska, I'll kind of go into northern Russia. We'll see how that works out anyways. I don't know how much I'll need. Now, I have played 1960 before and if you just leave Cuba alone, like Brazil will take it out. But I'm going to speed up the process because for this, for this major fact here, and I know it happens, I will be nuked by the Russians if I throw down super heavies with generals up in um, Washington, D.C. and New York. They will definitely nuke me. So I'm going to avoid that by taking it out first, then... I don't even know if I'll throw them down after that. I, it depends on how far along in the game I am. But definitely the first real push is going to come at Hong Kong. And it'll probably be a battle back and forth because he'll bomb the shit out of me, take it back over, then I'll bomb the shit out of them and take it back over and it'll be back and forth. Until I'm able to snatch up another good city. This KV-5 is just about gone. It took an ion cannon and it did not like that. It hurt. Now this right here is going to be interesting. I think, I think what I'll do is throw down some paratroopers. Luckily, they're level 4. I think Hong Kong's going to get my artillery generals. It's so like I said, it's going to probably be back and forth fight. Alright, I'm finally getting close. I can see Cuba now. And I think that should be good. I probably don't need anything else to take that. 
With whatever I got left from here, I will send up into Egypt. I don't know if I'll be able to take out Egypt with what I'll have left, but I'm sure going to give it a shot. Okay, do work, Commandos. Sweet, 52. I'm telling you, Commandos are vicious against tanks. It seems like Commandos are, like, their sweet spot is super heavy tanks. They just rip them apart. Oh, we got a battleship coming in here with a general. I got some subs prepared. For, I got a sub trap for him. I guess I'll send the ships up along the coast. I don't know what else to do with them. I want to use them because they were given to me. You know, it's even like when when I used to get a, a completely shit shirt, something I'd never wear for Christmas. You know what I would do with it? Because I still wanted to use it because it was a gift to me. I would make a dust rag out of it. That's right. I would, I would dust shit with it. Or, if it was thick enough... I would use it to, like, clean my car. No gift has ever gone to waste. Given to me. I will make use of it. Man, Christmas... <laughs> that gets me thinking. I don't know how you got your guys' Christmas are, but at my house, we have a pretty decent sized family. And back in the day before we all went cheap, we all just decided, we used to all get each other's presents, so there'd just be a shitload of presents. And then we kind of went to the like, we drew names and then we'd buy each other's presents because Christmas just got like to be too long, the gift exchange, anyways. I remember like, hiding presents because we used to do it in rounds like one round and you start at the youngest and go all the way to the oldest and then round two you'd start the youngest again and you just sat there for like just a stupid amount of time so to get out from it earlier <laughs> i used to like take my presents like you know slide one underneath the couch maybe take another one and um put it under a cushion Because <laughs> no, by, the, by like the second round, nobody's paying attention to who's opening whose gift now anyway. So nobody notices that, hey, I don't think they opened my gift. Nobody knew, noticed because it was just, everybody was ready for it to be over. And then other people caught on to what I was doing, you know, like the younger people and they would, they would do the same thing. I guess that's like a, I watch a, um, a morning radio show is a uh, kid Craddock, although he died, they still call it that. I'm sure some of you, especially in the South and East coast, I think is where it's really big. Um, but they do a first world problems. I think that would fit into a first world problem. God, I get, I just get too many Christmas gifts at Christmas. God, oh, I just don't want any more. I have to hide them, there's so many of them. Yeah, I should call into the show when they do first world problems and tell them what's up with that. Alright, do I want to take that now with some air units? I'm kind of strapped on cash here. Ah, damn. China's already taken over a Japanese city. I want to go wreck this battleship. I want to wreck these two battleships.
I need more artillery for sure. I'm gonna take that Russian city up north. I bet it nukes my carrier though. At some when I get it too close, it's gonna get nuked. You know what I watched today? I st I just <laughs> I started thinking about World of Warcraft. And I wanted to see like what type of traffic the videos uh World of Warcraft get. And I've got this uh Chrome extension and they got it for Firefox too, I'm sure other browsers. Uh, it's called TubeBuddy. And you can type in um, titles or tags and it gives you kind of a rundown of how often it's searched for, what the competition is like for that game. And um, anyway, so I throw in World of Warcraft and the competition is real real high for it still and so is the uploads for it and so it gives you like a rating like and I think it's poor is the rating that it got for um, making videos on it based on like how many uploads and um, the search volume that's what it is it's uploads and search volume is how it's rated anyways so I clicked on, on like the main guy that had the most um, tags that were showing up for World of Warcraft. And the first video I clicked on was why I quit Warcraft. And I was just like, you know what? And I've told the story why I quit playing. But I was like, I want to know why this dude quit playing. What What is up with this guy? And you know what? It was He played a lot longer than I did. He played into Legion. I, I haven't even looked at Legion yet. But he quit for a lot of the same reasons I did. But it got me wondering, like... It just got me, it got me missing World of Warcraft again. But it's not like a miss, like, oh, I gotta get back in and play it. It's like a miss where... I, I wish it was the same as it used to be. But I thought, and this was only, this was just a brief thought that went through my head. I should make a World of Warcraft video and talk about why I quit. Why did Brumanati quit playing World of Warcraft? You know, and in the background I could be running some dungeons or something, soloing some dungeons. That's what I did for like the last half a year that I played that game off and on was just solo old content. Like I was, I'd, I'd love to get in like the 40 man and uh, the 40 man raids and go solo them. I can't remember if I could solo I think I could solo the raids through Burning Crusade. I don't think I could solo the raids in Lich King. But anyways, that's what I did on YouTube today. Watched a couple videos about World of Warcraft players and why they quit. And it was basically, we all had basically the same premise. All right, Havana, you are going down right here, bro. Thank you, Cuba. It was nice knowing you. 
Now we can get some free trade because we, we control your land. There'll be no Cuban Missile Crisis. Although they kind of do have the Cuban Missile Crisis because they have those uh, missiles set up there. I think that's just for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, because there's a stage. Yeah. Yeah, there's a mission or a campaign mission or something like that. Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember that. That was a long ass time ago I played that. I would love to take Tokyo. That would give me a pretty decent boost in income. It looks like, I mean, our foothold here is still pretty precarious. I ain't gonna lie. We could be knocked off of this continent pretty easy. Why is nobody taking on Thailand down there? And what am I going to do next? I'm gonna get Chong King loosened up for the taken. Okay, it looks like my my European allies are still holding out pretty well. I'm gonna send what I got left here. I'm gonna take out this Russian base and then I'm going to send them into the Mediterranean and just go wherever needs help. Italy maybe, Balkans, I don't know. What is up with their push down here? I'm just chilling down here. Why do you keep trying to ruin my game? We're getting close to the Russian invasion. You know, if I could take Pyongyang, I could... I don't think it parachutes all the way to Tokyo, but I think it's like one tile short. Take that. That's for not helping me. Let that be a lesson to your kinsmen. Yeah, my allies aren't doing too bad. I mean, it is only round 12, but still they could have... I've seen it a lot worse than it is now, let's just say that. I don't know where I'm going to use Goring at. I'm kind of wanting to use him in here. I'll probably use him. You know what I'll do? I'll probably use him to take, like I did that one time. I don't know if that was, shit, I don't remember what it was, but I used him um, to take Tehran from New Delhi and was able to throw him up in the Middle East and just wreck shit. surprised my... well, I'm really not. I was gonna say my artillery general hadn't gotten nuked yet, but like I've always said, they don't seem to care or give a shit about artillery generals. It's when you put your generals on a tank that you just get raped. Now they will bomb the shit out of a aircraft carrier with a general on it, for sure. 
or any city with any type of general on it. On any type of equipment, we'll get nuked. It's just nuke bait. Yeah, one. Oh, I was thinking Pyongyang. It was Seoul that has... I was thinking another year where Seoul didn't have an airfield and Pyongyang did. So anyways, I'm within one tile of Tokyo. And why they haven't put a unit down there, I have no idea. Why would you not want to save your capital? They just leave it open. My aircraft carrier is still up somehow. The Russians have not nuked it. We've made some, some pretty decent headway, guys. Not too shabby for the first episode. We've even pushed into Egypt. Which I didn't think we'd make it to. Anyways, guys, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Slap the shit out of like and subscribe, and I will see you back here for our next upload. Peace. Ruminati out.